Welcome to this episode of The Complete Picture. I'm Julianne Cost. In the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at the photo restoration and colorize neural filters in Photoshop. Both of these filters use artificial intelligence and machine learning to create completely new pixels to fill in content in an image. We're going to start with this black and white image, well, technically a grayscale image, and in order to add color, I'll need to select Image, Mode, and convert it to RGB color. Then in order to add the neural filter non-destructively, I'll want to choose Filter and Convert for Smart Filters, which will convert my background into a smart object. I'm going to rename it Original. And then I need to make three additional copies. I'll use Command-J on Mac, Control-J on Windows in order to create these copies. And I'll rename the second one Restoration, the third one Face, and the top one, color. Then I'll hide the visibility of the color and face and target the restoration layer. I'll choose filter and then neural filters. Now the first time you run some of the filters, there will be either a cloud icon or a little download button, which you'll need to select to download the AI model from the cloud. In fact, some of the filters like Smart Portrait actually need access to the cloud to do the highly intensive processing that's required to create the new pixel information. The list that you're viewing might be different than mine as Adobe will most likely update and create new filters over time. All right, we'll start by adding the photo restoration filter. We can see that it's still in beta. That's another good reason to add it as a smart filter in case I need to use the smart filter mask to selectively hide and show the filter. There are three primary sliders. Photo enhancement is going to try to improve the overall contrast and tonal range in an image, as well as remove noise and grain while still trying to maintain details. The enhance face slider if the filter detects faces, the filter will make up completely new pixels to try to improve the details in the detected face or faces. And then scratch reduction will try to restore areas of the photo that have been scratched or damaged. I'll leave the photo enhancement at 50. I'm going to reduce the enhanced face down to 50 and I'll also increase the scratch reduction to 50. Then I'll use Command-1 on Mac or Control-1 on Windows in order to zoom in. Now we can toggle the visibility of before and after. While it might be difficult to see, especially if you're viewing this, say, on a small device like a phone, I think the Enhanced Face Slider is set too high, so I'm going to bring that down to about 20 so that her skin on her face better matches the skin on her neck as well as on her arms. There are additional adjustments that you can apply, including both luminance and color noise reduction, halftone artifacts reduction, and JPEG artifacts reduction. For now, I'll leave them set to zero, and then output this to a smart filter. While normally, if I wanted to toggle the visibility of the filter, I would use the icon next to the name of the filter I find that some of the neural filters take a long time to re-render, so instead I'll toggle the visibility of the entire layer so that we can compare it with the original. I can see that in the top of the umbrella, Photoshop has removed too much information, as well as with this lace in the dress. So I will target the Smart Filter mask, tap the B key to select the brush tool, get a little bit smaller of a brush using the left bracket key, and then paint in the image to hide the effects of the neural filter. I'll do the same up here in the umbrella, as well as under her neck and over on this side as well. Now when I toggle the visibility, we can see that it's corrected things like the scratch over here and down here, but it's not removing any of the information that we want. When I zoom into 100%, while I like what the enhanced face slider did to the cheeks, I like it a little stronger on the eyes, nose, and mouth. That's why I created this separate layer so that I could apply the neural filters again, but this time increasing that slider almost all the way in the neural filters dialog. I'll also increase the scratch reduction to the same amount as before. And as we can see, the filter is applied much stronger. 
The benefit of doing this on two separate layers is when I apply this filter, I can then use a layer mask to hide the contents of the filter and then just paint in the layer as needed over the facial area. So I'll hold down the Option key on the Mac or the Alt key on Windows and click on the mask icon at the bottom of the Layers panel to add a black mask which is now hiding everything on this layer. With the brush tool selected, I'll get a little bit smaller of a brush and I'll tap the X key so that I'm painting with white and that way I can paint to reveal only the specific areas of the layer. So I still am seeing the skin that was processed with the neural filter on the restoration layer, but now I see the eyes, nose, and lips from the face layer. I'm applying it a bit heavy in this example just because I want to make sure that you can see the difference on the screen. Here it is before and there it is after. All right, next let's add some color. I'll select the top layer and then I'm going to change the blend mode to color mode. That way we won't see any of the luminosity values from this layer, but only the color. I'll choose Filter, and then Neural Filters, and apply the Colorize filter. I'll zoom out, and we can see that Photoshop has automatically colored the image. There are a number of additional adjustments. You can choose from a list of profiles and change the profile strength, as well as change the saturation and the color balance. For now, I just want to manually override a few colors, and to do so, I can click in the preview area on the right, and then select a color. In this case, I want to change these blue trees to green. I also want to remove some of the brown in the umbrella, so I'll click again, then click on the color swatch, and choose a less saturated brown color. I'll apply that, and add another color here to the tree branch, again double clicking the color swatch, and then adjusting the selected color. If I need to duplicate a color, I can hold down the Option key on the Mac or the Alt key on Windows and then drag it. I'll do the same to warm up the foreground by bringing some brown down in the lower portion of the image and Option drag it again here. Then to add a little bit more color saturation into our leg, I'll double click on the color swatch and increase the saturation. I'll option drag that to the other leg as well. Now I'll apply this as a smart filter and then I can use the smart filter mask, again using the brush, this time set to black to hide the contents of the filter, and then paint anywhere in the image that I don't want the color to appear. Finally, I'll tap the U key in order to select the rectangle tool. I'll choose white as the fill, and then drag a rectangle to create some edges in the image. However, the center portion of the rectangle is filled by default, so from the options bar, I'll choose to subtract front shape, then use the on-screen controls to round the edges, and on the properties panel, I'll click on masks and add a slight feather to soften the edge. At the bottom of the Layers panel, I'll hold down the Option key and click on the eye icon next to the original layer to toggle the before and after. So there you go. The next time you're working with old photos, be sure to give the Photo Restoration and Colorize Neural Filters a try. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.